So a couple years later, we were able to get a ship and go out and take a core, a series of cores, in fact, of which this is representative. And these cores showed an upper layer about a meter thick of silt and sand, and then an abrupt break and ooze below. The ooze of the same kind that Challenger Expedition had described in the late part of the 19th century. We had the evidence from the cores. We had the analogy with the other canyons. And geological theory at that point was ripe. So a revolution in thinking was born. And from then on, there was really no doubt that the great abyssal plains, they were formed by these floodings of silt and sand, the uh, result of the turbidity current. Turbidity currents can roll on for hundreds of miles, spreading out thick new layers of sediment as they lose momentum. Between brief episodes of turbidity current sedimentation, the slow, steady rain of pelagic sediment continues unabated. This immense wedge of sediment at the foot of the slope is the continental rise. Seismographic testing on the continental rise confirmed the presence of different layers of sediment. TIDR, this is KSLF, KSLF on the air for shot 987, 987. A 300 pound shot, 31 inch fuse. Take it in 30 seconds. Explosions produce sound waves that travel through rock and sediment on the ocean floor. Part of the sound energy is reflected back to the ship from each of the sediment layers. These reflections are recorded and yield a detailed profile of a layered ocean bottom. A laminated sandwich composed of coarse grain turbidite sands and rich organic muddy ooze. This muddy sediment found in the continental rise may reveal a new source of resource riches. Oil and gas originate where organic sediment has been left to decay for many thousands or millions of years. Oil slowly rises through the overlying sediments until its flow is blocked. As petroleum geologists say, it enters a trap. The porous sandy turbidites of the continental rise are an ideal location to store and trap petroleum. Covered by a thick, impermeable layer of muddy pelagic sediment, the petroleum is prevented from leaking out. Dr. Heason speculates on the oil potential of the continental rise. There's a strong probability that the three basic requirements for the accumulation of petroleum can be found in the continental rise. This arises due to the fact that the early ocean, uh, early Atlantic Ocean, was very tight and restricted, often became stagnant, uh, laying down very black organic muds, and also sometimes dried up, laying down salts. Afterwards, turbidity currents carried in sands and left perhaps thick beds of such sands on the continental rise. Petroleum migrated up from the black muds below into the sands, but didn't migrate all the way into the ocean because by that time, pelagic muds had created a blanket which turned into shale, which covered the whole sequence. As more and more sediment was deposited, the salts uh, became compressed and started migrating upwards and building structures and arching up the shales, thus having all the necessary requirements, source beds, reservoir rocks, and structure 
for petroleum. No one has drilled it yet, but the volume involved is so large that if oil does occur there, it could be equal to, let's say, five or ten Arabias. Until recently, commercial drilling was not feasible past a depth of three or four hundred feet. The deeper the water, the greater the problems at the wellhead. The advent of a semi-submersible drilling rig moved offshore oil and gas exploration into deeper water. Towed to location, the drilling platform is stabilized on submersible pontoons. Taller than a 28-story building, the platform is designed to withstand hostile weather conditions that can bring 20 to 40-foot waves, choking blizzards, and icebergs. New advances in drilling technology have extended the underwater reach beyond the edges of the continental shelf. The search for deep sea resources calls for the range and mobility of a ship, a very special ship designed for exploration and drilling in the deepest seas. The deepest parts of the ocean floor are the abyssal plains, four to six kilometers from the surface. They are vast, monotonous expanses, the flattest regions on Earth. Sedimentation in these regions far removed from the continent is very slow, frequently less than one centimeter in a thousand years. In the deepest regions of the world's oceans, the calcium carbonate shells of plankton begin to dissolve, leaving behind a brown, muddy sediment, red clay. This very fine pelagic sediment is composed of plankton remains. In these areas of the seafloor, where the rates of sedimentation are the slowest, chemical sedimentation assumes greater importance. the direct formation of minerals from the seawater itself. The most common of these chemical sediments are manganese nodules. First discovered by the Challenger, these rock-like balls and slabs contain a generous proportion of manganese, as well as nickel, copper, and cobalt. Commodities which, by the turn of the century, will be in very short supply from continental deposits. These sedimentary lumps have occasionally formed around whalebone or shark's teeth. Manganese nodules have yet to be fully commercially mined. The cost of developing deep-sea mining techniques is astronomical. But facing diminishing resources, mining technology is moving beyond the discussion stage. It is an irony that some believe we know more about the surface of the